Good morning. It is Monday, the 21st of June. I'm Ben O'Leary here for Markets Today, as usual, to start the week and have a look at what the market has in store for us. And it's a nasty start, this one, with our local market playing foe, the leader with America. Wall Street tumbled on Friday night on the back of hawkish Fed commentary, and this morning our ASX 200 is down 120 points, or 1.63% in early trade. Among the worst hit is Commonwealth Bank, which is down 4% and back below $100 after announcing that it sold its Com Insure general insurance business to Holland Group. Technology is somewhat surprisingly holding up pretty well this morning. Theoretically, it should be sold off on the prospect of rising rates, but it does seem that the commentary and ideas around peak inflation are taking more weight than the unsurprising reality that rates will rise one day. There's a little piece in the AFR this morning that quotes Wilson strategist John Lockton, and he suggests that the strength in tech names, despite the slightly hawkish shift among central banks, likely means that investors expect bond yields to remain around the current levels. Makes sense with the subdued bond yield reaction that we've seen in the last week or so after those Fed comments. The tech sector has been making some solid moves recently. It was up 7.5% last week and it is forcing a discussion on this desk this morning and it was at the back end of last week about whether we need to be looking to buy back the likes of Afterpay and Zero. Got those charts in the newsletter this morning. Both of them have been rather volatile over the last 12 months and seen sell-offs in recent months particularly, but are making a push and threatening to form a nice little uptrend again. And there's certainly stories that we're interested in getting involved in going forward. Broker Morgans has a buy recommendation out on Betmakers this morning. Of course, you will know that Betmakers is one of our holdings in the growth portfolio. It was sold off fairly savagely a couple of weeks ago, but has bounced back quite nicely to sit around $1.18, a little bit lower this morning after a couple of percent sell-off. And in their recommendation, Morgan's notes the MACD and RSI are both significantly oversold and they placed an upside target of 140 cents on the stock, stating that the current pullback and any further weakness would be an opportunity in their eyes. Let's hope we can get some momentum back into that stock. Now onto the week ahead, and it is a bit of a bare corporate calendar. A Tesserent shareholder meeting tomorrow is the only event of any note. While Macquarie Group has their technology summit running tomorrow through to Thursday, it's an interesting lineup of speakers, including representation from Atlassian, Zoom, Afterpay, Microsoft, SpaceX, and the ASX. Got a link to the itinerary and the full list of speakers in the strategy piece today. On the ex-dividend front, there is nothing to see here. Income investors can take a breath after spending the last couple of months collecting dividends. There are just four names on the ex-dividend calendar this week and none have a gross yield any higher than 1.4%, so are not really worth talking about. You can, of course, log into the strategy section in the newsletter or go in the calendars section and click on ex-dividends to see what they are. Quick look at the economic picture this week and there is not much happening locally. If not for the market action in the US on Friday and the action this morning locally, we would be saying it looks like a very quiet week, but that is sure to keep us interested. But on the economic front, retail sales are out today with a 0.5% rise expected in May after a 1.1% increase in April. Flash market manufacturing and services PMIs follow on Wednesday and round out a very quiet week. As I said, in Australian economics, the US has a standard kind of week full of standard numbers, including current account numbers for the first quarter, new home sales, durable goods orders, trade numbers, wholesale inventories, corporate profits, the final rating of the first quarter GDP number, personal income and personal spending. There's not much going on in Asia this week. China has just the one year loan prime rate out today. What would Bank of Japan monetary policy meeting minutes headline Japan's releases? And they also have the Flash Jibun Bank manufacturing and services PMIs all out on Wednesday. Over in Europe, they have the ECB non-monetary policy meeting out alongside flash market manufacturing and services PMIs on Wednesday, followed by an ECB general council meeting on Thursday and M3 money supply on Friday, while there is a bit of action in the UK with public sector net borrowing and CBI industrial trend orders out tomorrow. Flash market 
SIPs Manufacturing and Services PMI is Wednesday, and the Bank of England interest rate decision is the main event over there on Thursday, which is then followed by retail sales and GFK Consumer Confidence on Friday. And as always, last but not least, on the Marcus Today Media front this week, we have Marcus and Henry sharing the duties on ABC Radio Melbourne 774 with Virginia Trioli at around 10.25 each morning. Marcus will be on with his strategy piece and podcast Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and then weekly sector charts on Friday, followed by his ever-popular Saturday morning piece in the weekend edition of the newsletter. And just a reminder that Marcus's strategy podcast will be becoming a members only podcast in the very near future this might even be the last week of public releases so if you want to keep up to date with marcus and everything that he's got to say make sure that you're a member of the marcus today newsletter if you're not already a subscriber you can of course get a 14 day free trial on our website just visit www.marcustoday.com.au and follow the prompts on Friday, Chris, Tom, and I will have our next edition of the On The Desk podcast out. And speaking of podcasts, there were a few good ones out last week, so make sure you catch up on them if you missed them. Henry sat on the couch with Mark Landau, the CIO of L1 Capital, and was also a guest himself on the Equity Mates podcast, which Marcus was on just a few weeks ago as well. So check them out. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Buzzsprout, wherever you prefer to get your podcasts. And we have another exciting little piece of content from Chris this week with his chart chat webinar. He's done a couple of these in the past and they've been very popular. Make sure you register online for that one. You don't want to miss it. All the details about time and how to register and get your questions into Chris can be found on our website in Chris's trading ideas section. Tom will have another buy, hold, sell, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. And Henry tells me he does not have much booked, but he's a very popular man, so I expect to see him pop up on TV at some stage alongside all of his regular content, which now includes an end of day and morning podcast, with the morning podcast just being the audio file from the morning video that he's been doing for the last year or so. I think that about covers it all. Good luck this week. Let's hope this morning is a little blip, not the start of something more sinister. You'll be sure to hear if we change our minds on that one. Have a great week. We'll see you next Monday. 